<clears throat> Good morning, YouTubers. This is Francis. I um, keep getting this false sign saying that there's no audio, but must be something wrong with my camera or PC software. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is Saturday morning. October 12th, I think this is Columbus Day, and it's about 10.27 a.m. So, uh, I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, this is just a short, you know, update. And I'm going to try to do a video every day, uh, you know. So, today there's a gay pride parade in Jacksonville. It starts at a park. Um... I don't remember the exact name. It begins with a B. It's either Burn or Burke, something like that. But it's on Herschel Street uh, in the Riverside section of town. And the parade's about three miles. It's going to go probably down Park Street and to, yeah, all the way down Park Street probably to uh, Five Points. That's the end. And th there's a couple of places I shop. There's a... a really nice uh, supermarket. Well, it ain't a supermarket. It's like a, it's like a natural market, and they sell a lot of organic foods and things there. So, anyway, uh, I go there and buy some things that you can't find in the regular supermarket for my health. Anyway, uh, I'm going to show you what I cooked this morning, and when I post this, I'll, I'll list all the ingredients in the description, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much uh, stayed vegetarian all week, and uh, or vegan, and but I did purchase some um, beef heart. I have a I have a blue uh, jersey on today, and this is my um, this is a green skirt. It's really nice. It it do, it, it goes down to just above the knee. And it's like it's like a kilt, you know. It's really it's really comfortable to wear around the house, and you know, makes going to the bathroom a lot easier too. Anyways, uh, anyways, I just want to show you what I ate here. This is a uh, there's slices of beef heart in there. I think you can see the beef heart here. That's what these big strips of beef are. And when I buy the beef heart, it's grass fed beef. And it's frozen. And all these strips, it's already pre-cut in these strips, see? And uh, so I cook this in some uh, olive oil and my spices. I add a couple cups of water with the olive oil and then onions and then all like garlic powder, onion powder, turmeric, black pepper. You know, I, I just sprinkle like a little bit of each spice in there, not to overpower it, okay? And then, uh, and then I'll simmer the beef, and then, uh, you know, I'll chop a carrot up and throw that in there. And if I got some green uh, veg, frozen vegetables, sometimes I'll uh, throw green beans in there. Or I might steam some broccoli and, and carrot up in the uh, steamer. But I cooked this in my big Dutch oven. It was, you know, I just maybe a, qu a couple quarts of uh, total food. But I did something different today. I put a... Uh, uh, a quarter cup of grits. I just sprinkled some grits on the top after after the beef was had been simmered for a while, and everything was unfrozen. It was just bubbling in the in the pot on low heat. You know, I sprinkled some uh, grits on the top. Then I uh, put maybe um, half a cup of uh, gluten free oatmeal, Bob's Red Mill, and uh, and I simmered that for a while. So you know, this is like this is almost like a uh, meatloaf without the loaf. Okay, this is this is cooked in a pot on the stovetop. It hasn't been baked. So the temperature that this cooked at was below 200 degrees because I had the uh, you know once it started bubbling um, with all the ingredients in there, that's less than boiling. And um, I just turned the heat way down. And you know, you just let it sit on the stove for half an hour to an hour and everything simmers really nice in fact the carrots aren't even fully cooked they're they're a little crunchy but that's okay so everything's been cooked and sterilized and uh, and all the flavors oh I also got uh, 
a quarter teaspoon of chia in here and about a full tablespoon of flax seeds. So, you know, you put all these ingredients together with some sea salt and black pepper and turmeric and cumin powder and uh, what's that other stuff I use? Uh, ginger, ground ginger. All these flavors just simmer together on a low heat for an hour, maybe, you know. And then I and then I just take it off the heat and let the pot sim, you know, sit on the stove for half an hour so it cools down a little bit. And you stir all this stuff. So this is like almost like a beef heart porridge, okay? So so you might call it a beef heart and rice stew. And yeah, and then toward the end of the cooking, I I put in uh, half a cup of my jasmine rice and you know so that the rice would suck up the extra fluid so that's why it's it doesn't look like a soup now it, you know the rice sucks up all the extra fluid but the added flavor of the um, you know just a little bit of oatmeal you don't want to put too much oatmeal or uh, grits in there the corn these are organic corn grits too just a little bit sprinkled on the top it just adds a little bit of flavor you know in fact you can't even see the oatmeal it just the oatmeal just it, it just thickens up the sauce okay but this is going to be very tasty okay so uh there's about two days worth of uh protein in here and carbohydrate and i'm probably like up one days of olive oil in here so there's you know there's not a lot of oil and the meat is very lean. It's like 90%, 90-10% uh, lean. And it, the thing I like about the beef heart is not too many people eat it because, they, you know, it has a different taste, And but I love it. And uh, anyway, uh, not bad for $3 a pound, though. You know, it might be a little on the chewy side, but beef heart nutritionally is very good for you, okay? In fact, when Indians killed buffalo, the first thing they went for was the heart. You know, they, they just cut that animal open and just cut the heart out. Sometimes they'd eat it raw. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not going to do that. But what I'm saying is if you simmer, you know, beef heart, you know, at a low temperature in a, in a water oil environment under 200 degrees and just simmer it for, with vegetables and stuff. Oh, it makes a wonderful, wonderful beef broth too. Okay. Oh, the taste is amazing. I mean, even if you just didn't want to eat the beef heart, but you know, once you once you cook it, you can take the strips out and cut it with a steak knife into little little bitty chunks, and then just fold it back in. And, and it's like it makes like a beef stew or beef rice casserole, and you don't have to tell anybody it's beef heart. They'll go, hmm. Boy, this tastes a little gamey, you know, but, you know, it doesn't taste much different than, like, maybe venison. So all you uh, wild uh, animal harvesters out there, <laughs> you know, you know, try a little beef heart, you know. You know, let's say, let's say you didn't get that uh, deer when you wanted to this fall and, um, and you run a little short on animal protein. Hey, check out. Check out the grass-fed beef heart or grass-fed beef, and that's just as healthy for you as, uh, you know, maybe uh, wild animal meat that's been eating out in the forest, you know, all the good stuff. Okay, well, hey, I guess I just about used up all my time here in nine minutes. Holy mackerel. I can't think of what else I was going to talk about. Um, I plan on maybe going to that parade set this afternoon, but I can't walk three miles, so... I was thinking of pedaling my bike over there like maybe an hour or two before the parade starts. And then, like, uh, I heard that there are going to be people riding their bike in the parade. But I'd probably just maybe go to the back because, uh, you know, everybody's walking. So, you know, in a, on a bike, you can just do, like, circles or donuts in the street and, you know, behind everybody. So, I don't know. And again, I not I might not make it the whole way. I might just uh, there might be a pub or something along the way where I just kind of stop, run in, have a beer, then catch up with the parade. Sounds like a plan, huh?
Sounds like something McGinnis would do. Anyway, uh, okay, well, uh, I guess I better cut this off 10 minutes. So have a good day and a good weekend. And um, anyways, and oh, oh, one thing the, I was going to say, uh, if any of you girls out there ever got a message or a comment on your videos and it came from Rosie O'Kelly, and then it showed up and it says, uh, this is spam or something like that. Well, you need to kind of maybe write a letter and report that to uh, the YouTube police. Okay, you can contact Rosie for the address. Um, she gave it to me. In fact, I have it right here. I'm going to be writing a letter today and sending that in. Because, you know, her channel got, got you know, terminated and now it's under appeal. But, you know, we could get all the help. We could get all the, if you love Rosie and you love her channel, you need to maybe take maybe 20 minutes to an hour and write a little letter and send it to this address. It's, uh, the address is Account Termination Appeal Department. That's four words. <clears throat> YouTube, Y-O-U space T-U-B-E comma L-L-C. 901 Cherry Ave, <clears throat> San Bruno, that's S-A-N space B-R-U-N-O, California, C-A, and the zip code is 94066. So if you could just write a short note and, and just say, you know, that, you know, you have received comments on a, on a YouTube video that you uploaded, and this has happened to me, by the way, and this is why I'm writing them. And, you know, I just maybe uploaded that video an hour or two before, and I get an email saying, you know, Rosie made a comment, blah, 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 you know. And then, uh, so I click on it, and it brings you over to the video where the comment is, right? And then it says it's been marked spam. Well, I didn't mark it as spam. So who did that? Now, it's either somebody inside YouTube or somehow somebody knows how to hack in or maybe mark Rosie's comments as spam. Somehow they're able to do it, you know. Maybe some kind of computer wizard who doesn't like Rosie. So uh, we need to be proactive, folks. Let's hang together. If we support each other, then, uh, you know, if this ever happens to you, and your channel gets terminated, well, you're going to need the help of the rest of the community, won't you? So why don't we all, whoever this affects, I don't know, it could be like just a few people. It could be many people. And if many people write a letter to this address, just say to whom this is concerns, you know, I've gotten comments from Rosie that were already marked as spam when I just opened up my... Uh, YouTube video and I don't know why it was marked as spam and you know we need to build a, a mountain of evidence here to uh, you know help Rosie out you know Rosie's very upset about this and I don't blame her you know uh, 1300 videos just got like wiped out you know all the comments if you left if you took the time to type some comments on any one of Rosie's videos you know that's gone Okay. You know, we're not just doing this for ourselves. We're doing this for people that come after us. Okay? So, if, if you've ever taken the time to write a comment that you wanted the person you wrote the comment to to read and anybody else that watches that video and then reads the comments afterwards, why don't you take a few minutes and, and send a, a letter? It's going to cost you like a stamp. What's that? 48 cent stamp? Just an, an envelope, 50 cents, and maybe 30 minutes of your time to write a short note and address it, stamp the letter, put it in the mail. Whoo! Post office will deliver. Okay? So I'm drumming up some support, and uh, there's some other girls that are doing this too, like Ricky Messercola. And, um, you know, so we need to uh, be proactive, folks. You know, you know. I don't feel like being part of the road and getting tread on by these uh, haters. So we need to do what we can to help each other out. So uh, anyway, that's 
It's almost 15 minutes. Got to go. Love everybody. Eat well. Your life depends upon it. Woohoo!